Hello, I'm Father Jim Marchanda, the Dominicans of the Chicago province of St. Albert the Great, and I welcome you once again to Know Before You Go, a program that is produced by OP, uh, opcentral.org, the Dominicans out of Chicago, to help us focus on the upcoming weekend's readings. I am happy to present sort of an overview of what we're going to have for this week's readings on the Feast of the Holy Family. Every year the Church gives us the Holy Family immediately following Christmas. The Church is well aware that after the holiday celebrations, after the Christmas celebrations, when we've all been together with family, we probably need to spend some time in church praying about family. As a matter of fact, I wrote a song called Family, Friends, and God, and the refrain goes, thank you God for family, for relatives and friends, for those who bring your love into our lives. Now, when I preach about that song before I teach it to a congregation, I always tell them when I talk about family, friends, and relatives, that the relatives even include in-laws. Mothers-in-law, fathers-in-law, sisters-in-law, brothers-in-law, that the expanded family, the extended family includes us all. And yes, we all bring one another closer to God by the love that we show for one another. That seems to be what the whole feast of the Holy Family is intended to give us. We see the theme about the family that comes right away from the prophet Samuel. And it's simply the story of this dedication of Samuel to God by his mother after his birth. And then all of a sudden we move from that beauty of dedicating a child to God to the Jesus story that comes to us from Luke's Gospel. That is the story about Jesus when he was 12 years old and stayed behind following a Jerusalem feast so that his parents lost him and they were worried for days trying to find him and finally discovered him in the temple speaking with the elders of the church. We see that even Jesus, Mary, and Joseph, for as holy as their family was, were not spared from some of the tensions that just come in normal family life. That's good news for us. Jesus and Mary and Joseph went through the same kinds of things we go through. Mary and Joseph knew what it was like to parent, knew what it was like to worry about their child, knew what it was like to have to go look for him and try to wonder what he was thinking. What were you thinking? We have to see that Mary and Joseph, even though called to bear the Christ and bring him to us, were not spared just the normalness of everyday living. It's a very important thing for us. And I think that's what we can hear in this weekend's readings. The middle reading that's fit right between those from 1 John is the reading that talks about us and says, now we are the children of God. And I think about that in the context of our families. And we realize, you know what? We too are holy families. We too need to understand ourselves in the holiness of family so that we can see our tensions should not take that holiness away from us. We should never give more power to our tension, more power to our worries, more power to our struggles than we give to our holiness. Our holiness is first. We are made in the image and likeness of God. We are fathers and mothers and children and brothers and sisters, just like Jesus, Mary, and Joseph were. And in that, we can see our holiness is what is first. Our struggles and our tensions and our maybe being lost and left behind in the temple for three days are secondary and should never be empowered to be stronger than our love or stronger than our faith. It's up to us. On this Feast of the Holy Family following Christmas, I invite you, look very squarely at your family, the gift you have been given, and look with gratitude at the love you have in family, and renew yourselves. I invite us all to renew ourselves in that love, and to empower the love more than we ever empower the struggles. These readings are about us and your and my holy families. God bless you all.